the silver deficit, it seems like it's getting worse and inventories of silver are being depleted. Um, so what is the end game? That's what he asked you. And I guess I'll ask you this. What is the end game of this? If, you know, industry needs silver, but we're continuing to see um, the stockpiles being depleted. Yeah, they, that again, all things being equal, right? We can look at 2010 and 2019 and try to make some forecasts of how far silver rallied under the same conditions and that sort of thing. And that's what I did in my in my macro cast this year. But that's another thing. And it's I, I'll get back to silver, but that you can see it in copper. You can see it in zinc and lead and aluminum and nickel. The global stockpiles of these physical metals are I'm, I'm not just declining. They are depleting. Um, I saw a thing on, I think it was either, it was either zinc or nickel, but at the LME 10 years ago, they had 200,000 metric tons in their vaults at the LME, the London Metals Exchange. They now have 20,000. Okay. Uh, Copper is, I mean, obviously about the most important industrial metal in the world and global, known global stockpiles of copper are being depleted. And so you, you start to wonder if the same thing could happen with silver. the One of the things that just came out yesterday is the Silver Institute, which is I mean, not some kind of crazy tinfoil hat site like mine. <laughs> the Silver Institute, you know, which came out, oh, I don't know, 60 days ago. It was about the time silver really started to rally late last year uh, and said there's this huge supply deficit of 100 and whatever it was, 97 million ounces in 2022 they came out and revised that yesterday and said they underestimated the amount of uh industrial demand by what was 30 million uh 30 million ounces i think is what they missed or 40 million ounces something like that and so now they're saying last year's supply deficit was actually 247 million ounces or something outrageous okay well that's a one-year anomaly maybe and maybe if there's a global economic slowdown, it you know it, it won't be that great this year. But uh, unless you recycle a lot of that, that silver is you know gone. It's in solar panels and you know all the other uses of it. What would be interesting is if we start to see in from silver users some of the same things that we've seen in some of these other metals, including copper. In fact, Trafigura, I think is how you pronounce. I never understood how T R A F I G U R A. Biggest commodity trading firm in the world just withdrew a massive amount of their copper from the LME from the LME vaults and they said they did it because they are on the hook in all their trading activities of delivering copper over the next three to six months and they wanted to make sure that they could do it and they weren't going to take any chances with just leaving it in the vaults in London so they actually took it out what happens if again that not only depletes and reduces the leverage ability uh, in these, you know, in the paper markets. What if that happens in silver? It could very could if, again, we continually run now 200 million ounce or more supply deficits in silver. And that throws, like I said, I, we can talk about, as I began this answer about yesterday, I think, um, we can talk about where silver will likely rally to given the dollar coming down and rates coming down and renewed QE and all that stuff over the next year and a half. But that's a whole, you know, there are other factors like that that, I mean, talk about throwing a wrench in the works. I mean, that could change things dramatically. It seems like we're already seeing this backdrop that is bullish for precious metals. Um, But yeah, like you said, there are all these wild cards and the supply of silver is one of them where with without the supply deficit, there's still bullish fundamentals for silver. But with it, it just it could be very explosive for the price. No doubt. No doubt. And again, you look at it uh, like I I printed this week. So I've been watching copper so closely. Uh, I wrote an article um, and used a chart goes back to 1970 where in just a straight linear chart where I plotted copper with silver and uh, and put them on the same chart. And you can see how closely correlated they are as you kind of expect. I mean, we, we view silver as a monetary metal, but not a whole lot of people do. So you look at it as they're two industrial metals. And so they kind of move in tandem and sometimes copper gets ahead and silver lags and they flip flop. Even right now, Versus that historical correlation, silver is about uh, 50% undervalued versus copper. 
So if if copper continues to roll higher, which it might, um, that's another reason why silver is not going to stay. You're not going to see copper go from four dollars to eight dollars and silver stay at twenty two. I mean, uh, I just can't imagine that's going to happen. And so you put all this stuff together, China reopening, um, you know, finally getting out of its one covid policy, the, you know, all the geopolitical things that are going on, you know, and, and this movement that seems to be building to have uh, some of the what the U.S. perceives as adversarial countries begin to work together to circumvent the dollar as a trading vehicle. You put all those things together, too. Again, it's pretty hard not to see where, you know, buying yourself some silver at $22 plus whatever, at, you know, spot plus whatever isn't a pretty good deal for the long run here. All right. Well, Craig Kempke, before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where can our viewers find you online? Well, again, just just be wary. I think probably of of the what we've discussed here, Elijah, um, you've got to be patient. But, you know, I I kind of came up with those three ideas of what should we watch on the spot as you were asking me that question. And I think that's probably the most important point as I look back is what we've discussed. Watch those three things. Watch the jobs report to roll over. Uh, watch inflation come down more than people are expecting just because it's a moving average, that annualized number, right? And understand that once the Fed says they're done or very likely done, that we're very close historically to cutting. And when all that happens, again, gold will anticipate it like, you know, gold rallied uh, already, uh, what, $350, 20 some odd percent off its lows. 